been in on this. That, and we're ready to go find out how to get a job I did sharpening. Put wax in the rails, try and keep it smooth. Every now and then I gotta grab it, pull it back, give it a give it a little bit of a slide back. Just right there where on the log hits that I've got a two to four at an angle, so it's making a little bit uh, on around the slide back. I need to sharpen that pitch up. So anyway, I'm gonna pull it back and after it's done we'll get rid of the slab and cut it for another cut. There we are there, back to neutral. I'm going to turn the blade off just for the, for the sake of it. And there is our first slab. Put it down on the ground for cutting off. And it does a nice job of cutting. Um, with the winch on there, it's a nice straight cut. And, you know, we're not looking for perfection. Uh, while we're doing this, we're looking for something that's you know, basically around an inch wide. Even the edges don't have to be perfect. And you just back the screws out with that. Some of the guys think that putting screws in there is, is a tough deal to do. Well, it's not. I mean, the, the wood is green and it will actually go back to itself. So all I'm doing is lining this up again on the cut where I want it to cut. And it's generally going to be real close to wherever your other, other side came in and cut. And as you can see there, this is my saw cut, so I'm going to cut off that, and I'm going to square cant. Loosen up my knobs right here. Straighten up. At this point here, I'll start trying to cut a straight edge off of that other side. So I kind of try and bring it in a little bit straighter. I'd rather go off of my index marks here and try and keep my log straight that way. So that at the end it works out with a nice straight cut on the log. And I've got a bunch of screws here. And I'm really just going into sap wood. The weight of the log will probably hold it in place where it's at. And um, it's ready to go again. So there they are there. We're tight down here so that this is so that we're basically <coughs> parallel with the cut. So we're going to turn everything back on. Uh, cut again. another slab so I'll turn that into firewood you sit there and look at that walnut and you go wow that's some beautiful stuff nice thing about having your power to your deal on a remote fob is you can turn that off real easy and it's basically on a lantern that's around my neck but I've cut the cord in half and taped it together with masking tape so it's a, like a fusible link or it'll break if something gets hold of it it'll break it right off my off of my uh, 
neck. So, okay, we cut that part. We're going to rotate it one more time. We got two sides that are cut. Again, this isn't, I'm not looking, this angle right here doesn't really have to be all that square. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not lining up for perfection. And it just has to be close. And, you know, whenever you plane it and join it, then it's going to pull it in straighter. Anytime what you're doing is you're refining it uh, each time you're cutting it. So, it, you know, it, it's pretty close. Slag wood, of course, most of that sap. And so any screw marks that I put in there with the screws is going to be gone because we cut that part of it off. So the only exception is this right here. And this is not a heartwood. This is a slag, the slag part of it. So you'll have to keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to roll this over one more time. And now we're starting to come up with a nice square pants. And we'll put the screws involved in that to keep that tight. Pull it in tight. And, yeah, you know, the weight of the log would probably just go ahead and pull it through there. But uh, if it's not shifting, then you don't have to worry about the thing going anywhere. Okay, I'm going to need to move that in just a little bit. So we're going to cut this off. And probably about every cant you could look at, it's going to be somewhere between an inch, inch and a half. And so we'll put that in an inch, that at an inch, and crank it down with the index lines. Now, keep in mind that this was... A metal, all metal machine table, it would probably work a little better, but the wood seems to work fine. When I'm dragging the log, this part right here has got uh, just a hair than this side. Um, I could probably do better with, with a piece here, hardwood, but for right now that's just fine. Okay, let's fire it up. And turn on dust collector. There she is there, taking off. And away we go. Of it. So, you know. And 
There we go. Okay. Drop that off there. So we've got four sides, so now we're ready to cut lumber. And there's your cat, the wood, and all I need to do is just start moving up a, an inch at a time. And this is where the lumber comes out. The first four cuts are just getting it to the point where you can make lumber. And here we are. That's the one inch reference line. They're parallel. We're loosening that up. We're moving it to the next one inch line, which is about right there. And this has worked pretty good. I, I just drew them lines on there as I did my first set, so I didn't have to remeasure things. And an inch, inch and a quarter. I think these are inch and eight. I'm not sure. They're about an inch full, inch and eight. I wouldn't go less than an inch. Uh, by the time you get done playing in and everything, you're going to come down with three quarter inch board. So if you're wanting a heavy three quarter, then I'd probably go inch and an eight on those sides for sure. But anyway, it's ready to go. And not too tight. There's the lineup for uh, the board. And we're ready to take off a new board. This is what I cut yesterday afternoon, about an hour. Uh, keeping in mind that a one board, one piece of walnut board, of course that piece is the slab off the back. This is the one that had the rock in it. But anyway, uh, uh, just one of those boards at, uh, at Menards. He went and bought it off the shelf. It's, it's wrapped in plastic, which is going to be the highest. But a three-quarter inch board, these are one inch and eight. Uh, three-quarter inch board, three and a half inches wide by four foot long. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, a $25 bill. So if you looked at that, they're just a little bit shy of four feet. If you looked at that and went down there, you're looking at quite a bit of money there. It's a couple hundred dollars worth of walnut there that's ready to go and all I have to do is take it out the shed, leave it stickered, let it dry, put a tag on it, let it dry out the shed for a year, year and a half, and then put it to work. And it doesn't really cost me much more than my time and some electricity. Alright, let's turn this into some lumber and start it all up. That keeps running. And we're gonna pull the board off of it. Okay, whenever that happens, what that generally means is, is that the blade's getting dull or feed it too fast. So what I'll do is I'll come down here, drop this down to the 40 amp, and that's gonna be, it's six volt, 40 amp, instead of 12 volt, which drops the speed by half. And we'll go through the, through that and see what we can get out of it. Walnut, uh, eight inches wide, uh, going to the heartwood, and that's quite a bit to cut. Just raw wood, and you know it's a challenge. I'd like to have a saw with three horses or five horses, but it would never be an issue, even with a gold blade. But uh, this blade has cut quite a few logs, and it's uh, you know it's it's ready to be replaced. I sharpened it uh, once or maybe twice, so uh, we'll see how it does. And with this setup, I have to dismantle this. It'll take me probably 45 minutes to put a new uh, blade on there, and uh, that'll, that'll cut quite a few logs. I have never used a uh, carbide blade. These are always been uh, inexpensive grizzly uh, blades. The cut of grizzly at about $22. Blade. But anyway, there's your there's your nice piece of uh, walnut. Got a little sapwood on the edges of it. That one little uh, place in there, of course, it's not going to be of any value, but um, you know, it does a nice job of cutting cutting your board. 
people sticker that and you know it's if you take calipers and that there it's it stays pretty close being right and there she is there it's kind of funny you can hit different parts of wood where this gets hot and uh or hard really hard so um it's it's a project so we're going to go ahead and sticker this and get a couple pieces of wood out here I've got some other stickers that are down in the down in the uh, shop, so we'll sticker that. And I generally will vacuum this and uh, vacuum the wood before I sticker it, and then I'll wax it. I'll dip it in a uh, wax on the end so that it doesn't check. And all we're going to do here now is slide this up an inch, and as these boards. These logs get a little bit lighter. They move a whole lot, lot, move a whole lot less, or a whole lot easier. Again, I'm gonna miss that uh, that curve and that down there. 